So the first thing that we want to look into is the number of neurons in the input layer. Uh, so the number of neurons in the input layer is going to be determined by your data. So let's look at an example. If you have a data that has images that are 28 to 28 pixel images, well, you're going to have 28 times 28 neurons. That is 784 neurons because each input is going to be, or each pixel is going to be inputted to one neuron. Another example, if you have a table data, let's say, and you have four features, then you're going to need four inputs or four input neurons because you have four things to tell the neural network. Another thing that is going to be determined by the data is the number of neurons in the output layer. So again, let's look at some examples. Um, let's say your output, your prediction is either someone is male or female. What you can do for that is either you can have one neuron and then it's going to say if it's zero, it's female. If it's one, it's male or vice versa. Uh, or you can have two neurons if one of them is uh, higher in probability or higher in the prediction. It means it's the uh, female one. The other one will signify the male one. So this will depend on how you set up your data. If in your data, your target feature is set to be zero or one, you can use the first one. If your target feature is set to be one or two, for example, and that's how you want to use it, then you can use the second one. Of course, then if you do this, you're going to have to change how you calculate your loss, for example. Um, another example is, let's say you're doing regression and the output is going to be from zero to 200, or it could be even from like zero to one. Uh, then you're going to have a one output function or I'm sorry, output neuron. And that neuron is going to get different activation functions or maybe no activation function uh, to give you the output that you want. So again, this will completely depend on your data and what kind of output that uh, you're looking for. Uh, another one is the one actually we did in the exercise. We had 10 output layers, 10 output neurons in the output layer. That was because we were trying to see 10 different outputs. So we had all the way from zero to nine possibilities of the numbers being from zero to nine. And that's why we wanted uh, possibilities of them being either one of those things. Next thing uh, to look at is hidden layers. So how do we decide how many layers to have? And in all of these layers, how do we decide how many neurons to have? So one rule of thumb is that it is better to have a deeper network than a wider network. And what I mean by that is it's better to have more layers than to have more neurons in each of these layers. Uh, this is something that I've actually also found very interesting. It's because layers are the things that learn features from the data in varying complexity. One layer starts from more higher complexity things. So for example, maybe it is able to see a tree. And then the next thing is going to be able to see branches. And the next layer is going to kind of see details on the level of branches. And then as you go further, it's going to see maybe leaves or even like the, the color of the leaves, the shape of the leaves, etc., etc. So the more layers that you have, the more different layers of complexity you will be able to handle. So that's why it's always better to have more layers than more neurons in one layer. And normally you can just start with one or two layers. Many problems that you're going to be working on are probably going to be okay with one or two layers. But another rule of thumb is to kind of start with two and then work your way up and see when you start overfitting, then you can start uh, making solutions or maybe decreasing the amount of layers. And for every layer, you can have a, a couple of hundred neurons and that should be good, like 100 to 300. But again, this is kind of uh, something that you will tune and something that you will um, try to optimize yourself a little bit.